Hi everybody, welcome back to another Bash tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about how to move, copy, and delete files uh, using the command line. So last time we talked about how to make directories and how to make your text files, but uh, now we, you're sort of getting into the real manipulating and working with those files to make, uh, to really make your real file system. So I have a lot of the same files that I had last time, so we're just going to be using these. Um, again, recap, we just use the cd command to get onto the desktop directory, and then ls to list the files and folders. So we're going to talk about how to move files first. So um, when you're using the command line, the move command is pretty much the same as a rename command, because the name of any file uh, there's the relative name, we've talked about this, there's a relative name which is like, so for instance, abstract.cp, but that's the relative name. But the absolute path to that file, which is also the absolute name, is the whole, I mean, slash user, slash video, slash desktop, slash abstract.cpp. That's like the explicit absolute name. So when you move a file, it's sort of the same as just changing that name. It's just changing what that path name is. And then you know, if when you do that, that ends up being in a totally different directory, that's okay, that's just part of the name. So when you move files, it's just like changing its absolute file name. But you can also do it using relative file names. So let's do a really simple example. I'm just going to rename file1 to file2. So uh, the command is mv, so it stands for move, but remember it's basically like rename. And I'm going to use the relative file names because we're in the desktop directory. So MV file one to file two. It's that simple. So the first uh, thing is file one. The first argument, or uh, yeah, the first argument to the command is your source file, and then the second argument is what you want it to be renamed to. So if we just do that, now we can list, and you see now instead of file one, we have file two. File one is nowhere to be found. So it's not the same as copying. We'll talk about that later. So now suppose we wanted to move file 2 into one of these directories. Let's do the school directory. So um, you do mv, first argument is the name of the file, so file 2, and then we want to put it into the school directory, so we'll do school slash, and then we can put uh, whatever we want to call it in the school directory, so if we want to leave it the same, that could be file 2. So you see now if we list on the desktop, file 2 is not there, but if we go into school, now file2 is there. So now uh, you could move file2 back out using the little dot dot shortcut. Um, and when you're moving something into the directory, you don't always have to list the name after the directory. So we could just say move file2 into school slash and then it will know that you're not trying to rename file2 to school because of the slash because school is a directory and you can't rename a file to a directory but it will just move it into the school directory so that basically does the same thing just if you specify the file name after the directory that you want to move it to you, you could uh, change the name all in one step so that's how you move files you can also move directories the same way you don't have to use any flag or anything fancy so if I wanted to uh, say move my music folder into the hobbies folder I could just do mv music slash uh, and then space so the, like the first argument is the music directory and then move that into hobbies so now if we list you see the music folder isn't there but if we go into hobbies now it's there so that is how you move files around uh, pretty simple pretty intuitive uh, now we'll talk about how to copy files so this would be if you wanted to keep the original file in its original location but you wanted another copy of that file somewhere else and so it, the syntax is basically the same, just the command is different. The command is CP, stands for copy. And so you can, let's see, let's go ahead and copy maybe main.cpp from the desktop into our hobbies folder, let's just say. So again, first argument is your source file, second argument is basically uh, where you want to move it. Or this is actually the name of the new file since you're not moving it because this is creating a copy. So it's like the first argument is the source file and the second argument is sort of the output file or what you want the name of the new file to be. And again, all of this can be done using absolute paths um, instead of relative ones. So you see here now that we, now that we list, main.cpp is still there and if we go into hobbies, main.cpp is also there. And um, 
now you have a copy of that file. Uh, if we wanted to do an example with absolute file names or combining them, I'll just copy uh, abstract.cpp abstract.cpp into users videos like into my home directory for some reason so you can do that too that's just using the uh, absolute path instead of the relative path um, and again the relative path basically is just files you know based on your present working directory uh, one little thing about the copy command, which is different than move, is that if you want to work with directories, you have to specify a flag. And this is because you're basically asking it to copy not just that directory, but you want it, you probably want it to copy every file in that directory. Whereas when you move it, I mean, you're basically just moving that one directory, even though it moves all the files with it. Uh, when you copy, you just have to uh, be a little bit more explicit I guess. So I'll just do an example. The way you do this is CP again and then the flag is hyphen and then a capital R. Um, so suppose we wanted to copy uh, the school folder into the finances folder or something. Or let's instead just say we wanted to copy the school folder into maybe a, like a new school folder. Okay so we wanted to make a new folder. Uh, you can do that just fine. I don't think you want to have this slash here. I think you'll well, no, no, it worked uh, because it's a new file. Uh, but it knows that that's the name of the directory. So if we list with the F extension, you can see now we have a new school directory in addition to the old school directory. <laughs> and uh, if we go into there, it has all of the files that were in the school directory. So it went ahead and copied those as well. So that's how you copy directories. And that's basically all you need to know about the copy command. Uh, lastly is sort of the most dangerous command that you're learning today which is how to remove files or how to delete files and so when you usually delete files uh, in uh, whatever operating system you usually use they would go into like a trash bin or a recycle bin and so then if you accidentally delete a file you don't mean to you can just go get it out of there and it's not until you empty the trash bin that stuff actually gets deleted it doesn't work like that when you're doing it with the command line so sometimes this is a way uh, if you like want to force delete a file and you don't want it to be put into the trash bin, you could come into the command line and do that. Uh, but you just have to be really careful because if you remove a file using the command line, it's gone. You can't get it back. There's no recycle bin that you can go to uh, to get it back again. So um, the command is rm, stands for remove, uh, but it's just delete. Uh, and so you just type the name of the file that you want to delete. So Let's go ahead and make a copy first of one of our files. I'll do abstract.cpp and I'll call the new copy abstract2.cpp. Now we list, you can see there it is. So rm and then the name of the file that you want to delete. So I'll do abstract2.cpp. It doesn't take long and actually deleting files takes a lot less time than copying files kind of just a fun fact. But there you go, we've removed abstract2.cpp and it is not coming back. So fortunately we had an extra copy of it so it's not actually gone, but um, it's not in the trash bin, it's, it's gone forever. So you have to be really careful when you use the rm command. And so um, similar to the copy command, if you want to remove a whole directory you have to use a flag because you probably want it to remove every file in that directory. So let's go ahead and remove the new school directory since we just created it. Uh, the flag is the same as the copy command. You can do a capital R. You can also do a lowercase r, uh, but a capital R is just so it's consistent with the copy command. Uh, but this is one of the cases where it could be an uppercase r or a lowercase r. So just so you know. So rm recursive is what the R stands for. I don't know if I said that, but yeah, it stands for recursively delete, basically delete this directory and then any files in that directory, including any folders in that directory and then all the files in that directory. So that's why it's called recursive. Anyway, so RM, R, new school, and I get, you can have the slash or you can not have the slash. It's up to you. And so that see it does it very quickly and that directory is gone and every file in that directory is gone forever so <laughs> you gotta be really careful uh, one thing that you might want to do when you're using the remove command is a flag which is a lowercase i so let me make the uh, copy of school again I'll make new school um, using the lowercase i flag now I haven't talked about when you combine flags basically 
you can have as many flags as you want with a command um, and you can do it like this so this is with the I flag as well as the recursive flag or you can do it uh, all together so you can just do a hyphen IR and that will that that also uses both of those flags so you can do it either way I'll do it this way for now but sometimes as a shortcut it's nicer to just put it all kind of after one hyphen so what the I uh, flag will do is it will warn you with every file that you delete so this is a way to be really careful about uh, which files you're deleting so if we go ahead and do this you see it says uh, you want me to look at the files in new school so you say you can say yes or you can say no I'll say yes Then it says okay you want me to remove data.txt and I'll say okay you want me to remove file 2 okay you want me to remove grades.txt maybe I'm like oh wait no I didn't mean to delete that so you can type n and it will just go ahead and skip that and then uh, if you don't want it to remove the directory you could say no there too so now if we go into new school you see the grades.txt is still there whereas the data.txt and file 2 have been deleted one more thing about uh, when you're working with directories and removing them uh, there's a special command that you can use to remove an empty directory so this is kinda nice uh, if you wanted to uh, explicitly delete all the files in a directory without actually deleting the directory itself just as kind of a precaution and so the command is rmdir all one word so remove directory so if we wanted to remove the new school directory uh, you type rmdir new school and then it will give you an error if the directory is not empty so this is kind of to be a little bit more careful uh, that you're not removing a really important directory or anything like that so then you can go see alright what's in the new school directory okay grades.txt I don't need that so you can rm that just using the regular command then you get out of there and then you uh, can use the remove directory and you know this is only going to work if it's an empty directory so in this case it works and we know everything's okay so that is it for this video. That is how you move and cop, uh, move or rename, as well as copy and remove or delete files using the command line. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll hopefully see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.